Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another episode of Airstreamers, where you never know what stream we'll ride or what room we might be in. You'll never know. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like it's the big reveal <laughs> of, like, we are in a new space. We have a new setup. It's We can be comfortable at a table now and not rocking against a <laughs> rocking chair. Thanks, Wenwas, for subscribing. Oh, thanks, Wenwas. Um, oh, my God. I don't know how I feel about this. That's Sam and Watson. <laughs> so a couple of things to talk about. We are in a situation in a room. <clears throat> uh, we will not talk about this room. No, I'm just kidding. It's my old office space that I would use uh, during, like, COVID time uh, teaching, like, virtual teaching. And... Uh, now that I don't use it as much, we repurposed it and reconverted it into a studio. So what this is, is a table, like a table that we're sitting at, which is remarkable. Uh, we have all of our stuff on here. We are looking at a TV and behind us is a green screen. And the green screen is creating this cool little space here, you know? So but more but importantly. This is, this is, you know, that's Chris's space. Oh, sorry. Did I just punch you in the face? No, but you're. Oh. Um, so. Yes, more, we are green screen. More official. importantly. Well, because look, the thing is behind us is a plain wall and it's boring. So we may as well animate it and make it something fun. <laughs> and more importantly. Thanks, too shy for you. Look at Eloise. The muskrat cam is, we mounted the muskrat cam, we moved it from downstairs upstairs, and we were most concerned about the cats joining us up here. And Eloise has put a stake in the ground. She has claimed this for her own, and she's been up here as we've been kind of setting up and testing all of the stuff, and she loves it. Oh, look, now Jen redeemed the muskrat love. That requires some work now. We need to figure out that concept. Well, watch your drink. Oh, Chris is going to have an aneurysm <laughs> with my drink, folks. Hold on. I'll explain in a sec. But I have to deliver <laughs> muskrat love, which is near. So, like, I don't know if you could see my foot. No. You see the bottom right of Eloise's thing, uh, bad moving? That's my foot. So, so I'm going to grab. We, yeah, well, I mean, look, you need to work on it and deliver some. It can't just be an easy challenge that we're redeeming something. It should be something that we're doing a little bit of work for. So getting up like and giving spilling it, my drink. Yeah, like that. Well, look, you wanted to be on that end. That was so very that, good love. So that you could get out of here when you go for your pee o'clock. Yeah, which is going to happen at some point. <clears throat> and I'm, it looks like you're floating in outer space. Yeah, it's, our, it's just our background, our general background. So we've done nothing extra... Behind us, um, we did modify some of the screens you'll see as the night goes on. Um, no living room lazy boys. No, we're sitting on just our, you know, old, like my office chair. My hope and goal is to one day buy a gaming chair. Oh, that my would God. Be fantastic. Leanne. Leanne, I love that idea. Mini <laughs> refrigerator. <laughs> Thanks, up here Stromberg. For like any of the refreshments that we might have. Uh -huh. That's a fantastic idea. Honestly, we should get that Xbox one that they're releasing this fall, the keeping it very game themed, which, by the way, that's a funny story. The Xbox Series X looks like a refrigerator when you stand it up. Right. And Microsoft leaned into the joke that everyone was making about it looking like a refrigerator and built a giant refrigerator in the shape of an Xbox Series X. And then people wanted this so badly that now they've officially announced a, uh, an Xbox Series X mini fridge that looks like an Xbox Series X. That's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. Oh, thanks, S. Stromberg. Wait, what is Bella saying about me walking around in shorts and a tank top and slippers? 
I feel like we don't talk about Chris raging against the icicles on their house in his tank top, shorts, and slippers. Oh, just in general because it's cold most no, of the time. No, no, no. Oh, no. She's talking about, I remember now, she's talking about the video oh, of me. Oh, that was the knocking best ever. The, knocking the icicles off the side of the house. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, Leanne, I'm not saying the giant one. I'm saying the mini one. The mini one is cute. It's like the size of a normal mini fridge. It just looks like a the Xbox gaming console because it's tall. Um, so listen, I'm going to spill a drink tonight. It's going to happen for sure. Um, it, just the nature of our setup, my microphone. You need to tie your hands behind your back. That's what the solution is. No, no, no. I gesticulate a lot. It's a part of my, my soul. It just comes out. Okay. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to well, knock the cable right over onto Eloise. <clears throat> look, there's an option. Either no drink or gesticulate there's no like the these are two ends of the venn diagram and there's no overlap no you said that's that's not two options okay drink sorry drink or gesticulate and that's it yeah or both uh brian said green screen technology is nuts what's really funny is that it's really not that difficult in the streamlab software and i'm assuming a lot of other um obs's and what it is is behind us is like the green fabric, um, which how do we like show that? Turn off. I don't the think we filter. can do that. Yeah. That was oh wait, no. Name. Actually, we could show it on uh, the. Oh yeah, when we get craft to the craft the cam, we'll do it. Look, I mean the crafter cam is very versatile. Oh wait, my this is not. No wait, look, that's green screen, is it not? I yeah, think it's maybe right when the light. So look, the what happens is also when I'm wearing my green hat, if I go back too far, it'll disappear because the green shadow on here um, will like, or the green cloth will cast a shadow onto my hat and then that'll be removed. Meepo said newer RTX video cards have a green screen mode that doesn't even need the screen. We need to look into that. That's interesting. And uh, Mega Meg said, was your background unattractive before? The one that's up here, like we're in a totally different room. But up here, it's a super boring background. Like we're right up against the wall practically, and it just would have looked boring. And more confusingly, the angle at which our roof slopes means we can't hang anything behind us. So look, it would have been nice if we put shelves and put like all of our gaming toys and like my Amiibo on there or whatever, but it's not at all capable of that. So we either would have been this or it would have been a gray, like a slab gray color, you know? So, so. let's talk a little bit about the setup that we had this week because it was a process. Yeah, your hat is doing weird things. Maybe move forward a little bit more. Yeah, my hat, because it's, I'm telling you because it's like the shadow is getting cast on it. Like we never play, we never practiced close. with your hat backwards. That's the problem. Well, that's how I do it. So deal with it. <laughs> Nothing about you guys is boring, said Chor Pam. That's very sweet. But looking at our background, we were like, no, we need to spice this up. Yeah, it is a little bit better now. Okay. <clears throat> how so, was your week since Tuesday? Um, how was your week, Chris? My week was great. We, after work every day, we were pretty much up here working and setting things up. So Monday we were off and then we did the big job, which was running the cable, getting the internet up here. And once we got that kind of set, then Tuesday you went for the TV and the desk. Right. Yeah. Tuesday was like a big odd jobs day for me. Like just a bunch of random little things that I needed to do. And then, um, then kind of started the setup, right? Everything else. Then we had to move all the stuff from downstairs, upstairs. We had to install the muskrat cam, install the lights for. Yeah. And the, the best cam. part about this is we, when we finish tonight, we're going to push a button and everything is done. And we just go downstairs and enjoy the rest of the night rather than every single night we've been disassembling. And the reason why we disassemble is because we don't want to make sure that um, the cats, the muskrats don't like get in on it. At least this room upstairs is um, uh, 
d- there's a lock on it that we the, the cats n- don't normally come up here. Uh, we got an OLED LG TV. I don't know the part the model number exact, <clears throat> but it's. Uh, so I think what's cool about this space too is that we can also use this just for regular gaming. Yeah, which I did today. It. Yeah, which I did today. Very nice. Uh, sorry if this has already been covered. I was tardy. I just love how Eloise has moved upstairs like nothing has changed. <laughs> yeah, it's adorable. And you know what's so funny now? Let me flip my hat around so that it doesn't. We've been doing this for only two days, um, like practicing up here for like two days. And we brought Eloise up just because we knew that she would likely stay. And now she loves this bed and this little area so much that whenever Chris is working up here in his office, which is like across the way, she waits at the bottom or the top of the steps, like looking for this space that she's she'll in. meow like and she's when she you know? wants to meow she's a loud meower yeah it's so funny she's the best um so my day today was consumed by video game playing believe it or not and i had a day that i've been looking forward to having for a really long time because i have had a bunch of random little things that i've needed to do over the past like time that i've been off from work During work, of course, I'm at work. But today, I did nothing except I played video games. Um, And specifically, I played Final Fantasy VII Remake for the PS5. It's really good. I just beat it before. Phenomenal. Folks, anyone who's watching, if you played Final Fantasy VII for the, like, PS1, you do need to play this one because it's really, 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 really good. But my story about that is that I was playing for so long and then at some point, Chris asked if I could go get something at the store. I'm like, oh, Jesus, I have to leave now and do work, you know? Um, and so I left. I opened the door outside. It's as if, like, I'm a bat and all of these lights are just sort of, like, coming into me here. Um, oh, thanks, Short Pam, for following us. Welcome, Short Pam, welcome, to this welcome. crazy stream. Um, and so I have all these lights attacking my face. My eyeballs are burning. I'm like, where am I? What is this sun thing? Because I was just up here. I wasn't even downstairs all the day. All day. I was up here um, sort of, like, test testing out the space, but also just, like, enjoying it. And... It reminded me of a scenario where my mom, when we were younger and we were living, uh, not living, we were in a summer home for vacation and me and my brother brought over some video games from America to Greece so we could play on um, with my cousins because we were all really young. And I think we were playing Sonic for the Master System, which truthfully nobody knows that there was a sonic game for the master system i thought that sonic like um the one where he's running in the green island or whatever it is the first board is like green emerald or something green hill zone yeah yeah i thought that was the first sonic game it was and then they made another sonic game for this the master system But that was genesis i thought correct that's what I'm saying that no one knows. Sonic 1 was released for the Genesis. Sonic 2 was released for the Genesis. Yeah. Somewhere along that way, they decided that since the Master System in Europe was still selling so well, they made another Sonic game that was specific for the Master System. So it was like if when Super Nintendo was out, mm-hmm. Nintendo would release a Mario game for NES. Yeah, like a new Mario game for NES. That's weird. It was totally weird. And I think that's why Sega is probably defunct. <laughs> that's just so weird. The Master System was just called the Genesis uh, in the U.S. No, it was not. It was not. The Master System was the Master System. Oh, it was he, my very first Meepo. console. I will do not... We are oh no. no I'm oh no. I've been revved up. The Genesis was <laughs> a sequel to the Master System, I can assure you this. Oh my god. Um so anyway Elias has been triggered. All of this to say that when me and my cousins and my brother and I were playing Sonic for the Master System in this summer home for the entirety of the day, my mom was pissed off at us. And <laughs> she walks into the room and she's screaming at us and ends up leaving the room by saying that in Greek, uh, 
θα πάθουν γαρίδια τα μάτια σας, or γαρίδες στα μάτια σας, which we cackled. We're just dying. What that means Oh, I is, thought, it, I mean, so funny when people say that. I die every time. <laughs> <laughs> What I mean is um, that we, uh, or she said, stop playing because you're going to get shrimp eyes. And we were just like, What? Shrimp eyes? What does that mean? Why do shrimps I have think, eyes? Is yeah. it bad for us to have shrimp eyes? What is she trying to say? And it's become like a, a like a joke in our family now. I so. think shrimp eyes. Yes, Meepo, you're right. Mega Drive was the one that was for Genesis. Shrimp do have eyes. They have those little black beady eyes that like pop out, I think. Or like, so maybe it's like thanks, when Kathy. you have, oh, thanks, Kathy. When you have like, Your eyes kind of glaze over and they just become one giant pupil. Yeah, Then but I think a, she was trying to go for that. Our eyes are going to turn red, like those weird, like dry eyes moments. That's what she was saying. Not yeah, that we're going to no, get like. No, Sam and Watson is saying they kind of bulge out. I think that. Yeah, I think I that's think, what she was going for, is what I imagine. So, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think they do have eyes. They also have that disgusting intestinal tract that you have to remove before you that is disgusting them. i don't want to think about that that is nasty that's probably one of the reasons why we became vegetarian <laughs> probably you're like slicing out their intestines to throw it out disgusting. before you make and eat them brian said could be worse i got uh right your brain yeah that was one of them too for sure but this particular one was out of pure anger and frustration that we're in this beautiful summer home and there's five children just sitting there glued to the TV playing Sonic and we just cackled. Like she said, this is if it was like the be all end all of us, you know, like, Oh, now we're going to get up. We were cackling. And it's to this day, me and Chris still refer to it as that. Like, well, today I played all day and I'm like, Oh my God, I have shrimp eyes. I texted him at some point when he was at work. Yeah, I mean, it's become a thing now. I so. think when we, um, a game that we really, what was a game that we had shrimp eyes on? Stardew recently? Valley, I would say. Yeah. When, we, when we were really into Stardew Valley, we had shrimp eyes. Like all of a sudden, it's nine say hours later. Yeah, Terraria or Final Fantasy XIV. All of a sudden, it's like 25 missions later, and we're like, oh, just one more. And then it gets to that cutscene where it's like, um, You know, just be aware there's going to be a long cutscene coming up. And we're like, yeah, sure. And then it's like three hours later. Yeah, and yeah. oh my God, shrimp eyes. Also, shrimp when eyes. we have our days like on our video game tournament <clears throat> on like Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah. Where we play literally from like morning to, to midnight. Those are shrimp eye days. But you know what, though? For me, those are not shrimp eye days. Maybe the because reason, there's variety in yeah, it. Yeah, because it's you're there. Is like kind of you're engrossed in a single game. Yes. That's what today was. Head. Today was, I'm not kidding when I tell you folks that I played from when I woke up, fed the cat. So it was like 10.30 when I started playing. And then I didn't properly stop until about 5.30 after. I mean, I did eat lunch. Like I did go to the bathroom. I, you know, did. I'm, do shrimps go to the bathroom? Um, I don't know. We need to look that oh, up. Oh, they do because they have the intestinal tract. Yeah. So. I had shrimp eyes today is the point of the story. And Brian, Brian this is, is why reading. I spoke about this today. Brian, I, this is his unofficial commission request for a patch. Completely and utterly. I am officially requesting Chris for a shrimp eyes patch now. Do you know what game is 40 years old today? 40. That's a long time. 40 years ago was what? 1981? So if that's the case, Pong? is it Pong? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Sounds like what I would call a perfect day. Steve, it was lovely. And that's <laughs> why I started this by saying that I haven't had a day like this all year. Exactly what I wanted to happen. And the game is fantastic. The story, gameplay, everything was, it just engrossed me. And this room that we're in is like a black hole. And I just walked out of here feeling like I was a prisoner of my own home. And all the lights were just burning my eyeball. And you were sitting here playing this and... Donkey Kong, 1981. Oh, yeah. that actually makes sense. Oh, that's just... We dropped the ball on that one. Good trivia, Leanne. You know. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. I mean, I think that was, that was your day today. And that was all a result of the work, blood, sweat, and tears that we put into... 
Yeah, I mean, look, it was all super, super fun. And I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the way that it looks. I do think that it looks pretty cool. And we're going to make, um, uh, not on the go per se, but like we might make adjustments as time goes on. So if there's anything that you're seeing on your end that you're like, oh, wait, that's weird to me or it just is throwing me off, blah, blah, blah. Just let us know. We're very open to feedback, um, but we're just trying to keep it as sort of normal as it was, so to speak, but just like modified with the green screen. One of the big things was if we kept the border around our green screen, it looked weird. It didn't look right. So um, that's why we removed the border. Plus and it gives we a got chance to, yes, yeah, to, to be bigger. Yeah. <clears throat> to use the be, space yeah. a little bit more. So um, there's that. When we like, Wait, what was I going to say? I was going to talk about something um, right before we were talking about the green screen. I don't know. But I have no idea. I've totally escaped my my mind. We were talking about, I don't know. Shrimp eyes and... Uh, and Shrimp eyes games. and then the perfect day. And then you had, uh, you said uh, the blood, sweat, and tears. I don't know. All right. Well, we're moving on. That was that. That was that. Yeah, that, that, that thought is dead to me at this point. Yeah. So, um, Meepo said, personally, I like the living room look. We got extra kitty action as they climbed on the back of the chairs. Yeah, that was <laughs> very, very cute for sure. And also, um, the tater tot, uh, jumping on the Peloton situation as well too. But what we're, what we are going to do is, so we still have work to do. Like this is done for what you guys see. Um, but the other side of this room we have to kind of organize and clean up because a lot of the stuff we've kind of moved off to the side. And so Eloise is up here because she's a perfect little muskrat and she'll just sit there and sleep in the bed. But the other ones, they'll be able to come freely. And as we're kind of up here more yeah, regularly, they will for I think sure. they'll probably come up here too. And I think that with the couches and the beds that we're going to have set up on the side here, the camera that we have facing Eloise, if it points more that way, you'll see a whole lot more going on as well in like a different setting than downstairs um but but <laughs> that part of the room right now literal disaster <laughs> it's like we are in this really cool setup of a studio and then to the right of us is a bomb literally a bomb <clears throat> you know so yeah we're gonna have but that's um, this weekend project we have a futon couch we're gonna have um probably like two or three beds and, the, and a little hammock too so, and a refrigerator up here. Put that in the book. That's a great idea. The refrigerator? Yeah, I love that. But idea. it needs to be the Xbox one. That's going to come out until October. It doesn't need to be the Xbox one, but yeah, so. I don't think it needs to be the Xbox. Um, we did record an PPS, a podcast pre show, just before this. So if you're on uh, Apple Podcasts, look out for it probably tomorrow. I would say it'll go live. I don't, I still don't understand. One moment it's like five days, another moment it's like immediately as I, as I do it. So. This is episode 58, and you want a fridge. Mini I, fridge. <laughs> the important things in life. Yeah, a, for sure. A drink fridge. Yeah, Show I mean, the and palm judgment-free zone. Well, oh, my God, no, yeah, it's like... No, I think we can... I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's really fine. not we that We can bad. show it on the on the cam later. On um, the on your cam. On the Crafto cam. Mm -hmm. I'll give, like, a little studio tour. For sure. Also, I mean, I feel like being in this space up here on the stream when I'm doing Crafto cam... Um, I feel closer to my sewing machine because it's just across the way in, in my office. So I feel like this is a step in the right direction that we are really elevating the stream to new levels and that I am having this closer spiritual connection to my sewing machine as totally. I'm delivering my artwork on the, so I don't know. I mean, should we switch to crafts with Chris and we can give a little tour. Yeah, sure. But I wanted to point out that, um, imposter Steve said 40 years ago, my, my older brother was in my mother's uterus. I was still a coming attraction a few years down the road. <laughs> 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 and, uh, Leanne said it's past train wreck. What is past train wreck? There's a conversation happening that I missed between Mozzie and Leanne and Allie wants to, wants us to show the bomb because it's a judgment free zone. And mainly it's just because Allie is curious as to what we two consider a mess. Okay. Yeah. We will show. Um, and Maz said, I do, it doesn't add up. That's why I think she really has something wrong. Oh, I think I know what they're talking about. 
I think so. Um, with the Instagram person, right? We had like a conversation about this. Uh, many, many episodes ago. So as this conversation is kind of happening and I'm thinking of Leanne and I am also thinking of how we spent a week in setting this up and that we... Yeah, Leanne, kind of that's what I figured. Dove headfirst into Twitch, started doing it, and then now, oh, six months later, had the idea of creating a dedicated space for yeah. it. Yeah. And we dove headfirst into that. And that kind of leads me to the one thing that I am thinking about potentially diving headfirst into, and that is the email that I got today from North Shore. This mm. is oh, not, you're just you're going. You're saying this? Out no, loud? I'm not doing it. I'm not saying I'm doing it. I just want to discuss it. Oh, I and it, was. I'm okay. Go for it. So I am. I have not been a runner in the past. I sort of despised running and I, for the last, what, year and a half or so that we've had the tread, the Peloton tread, I feel like I've used the tread more than I've used the the bike. bike. Yeah. I feel like I've kind of like, I got to the point where I was at the, with the bike, I was doing the best that I could and I was kind of not, not growing at all. And then we got the tread and I was kind of like, oh, well, let's focus on running because you really hate running. And like, that's really a let's make that better. Well, you like you as personally, me, like you hate running. I hate running. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I'm talking like my third internal person. Self. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. I hated running and I wanted to improve on that. And so I spent like the last year or so running on the treadmill and like improving my technique and whatever. And spending more time, <laughs> Leanne is saying, you'll do it. Um, I got an email today, and this is literally just a discussion point right now. I'm not committing to anything, but we're all family here, and I'm just going to put it out into the internet, ether, and talk about it. I got an email today from North Shore Animal League, and they said something like, join our New York City Marathon team, like, and, you know, have fun and hate yourself at the same time. And I am like semi considering it, joining it and like committing to doing like the Bex Gentry training for the next, it's like 16 weeks or something that she has training on it. Yeah. And that was a thing on it. And right? that would kind of line up pretty nicely with the, uh, when it would start. But I, I'm like torn about it because I want to do it. It's sort of like a life goal because I've always hated running and like to accomplish oh, yeah. I mean, that. You would be, this would be phenomenal. And like, I sort of felt that same way when we were starting cycle like years ago and it was like, Oh, well I don't know that you can do 275 miles. And so I'm kind of like, I want to, I, I work well with goals and I feel like if that is maybe a goal that I want to then you're, tackle, you're going to be doing the New York City Marathon in three months, four months. Yeah, I I don't know that I will be, but um, it's a thought. And so I'm that's, here for it. If that is what you want to do, I am absolutely here for it. And I think that you do work well with goals, and I think that you could really easily make it happen. Not e I shouldn't say easily because it's going to be a commitment, but. I think that you can absolutely make it happen. Well, Leanne sure. said her dad, her dad did it when, um, when he was like older and I don't know. I feel like it's, uh, um, Bella said, is it me or is it, or is Chris showing some nineties grunts tonight? And Bella said, no, not grunts. I don't know what you mean. Um, is there like a nineties grunt? Like 90s uh, grunt or grunge? Oh, grunge. What is what is a '90s grunt? I, know I don't 90s know. Grunge, I don't know what a like, grunt is. Like Nirvana and and Crazy said we should vote to see if the audience likes the new gigs. Um, uh, truthfully speaking, because this Listen, is going to be the you're setup, stuck with it. Yeah, like <laughs> we put a lot of time and 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 sort of investment into this new setup, so we will make modifications. But I don't think that we're going to just like 
okay, we're, you know, we're undoing and, and going right back to how it was. I think we're going to make some, um, some, uh, changes especially with the like the bed situation for the for the cats and stuff so oh my god he climbed kilimanjaro <clears throat> at 70 you bought thread do it do it do it do it yes ali says do it and meepo said he'd need a flannel for grunge oh did you mean grunge because then even that i don't even understand am i giving 90s grunge i don't know is that a thing maybe I am wearing my just, but we only shirt. see so little of it. I'm used to this being what Twitch is. It's not far and just far into air streamers. Oh, good. yeah, and you know what, Brian? That's actually what we were modeling it after. A lot of the folks that we follow online, and and channels that we see do this sort of like green screen thing because it allows for a lot of fun, um, uh, sort of organization of what the, what's going on on the screen. So. Um, when we play the game, I think it's cool. When we do crafts with Chris, I think it's funny. I sort of can't wait for that. Can we switch to it? I'm I'm ready for crafts with All right. Chris. And then right after that, we're going to wine o'clock because I don't have a drink. Well, because you spilled wine. it everywhere. Oh, my God. Okay, we're going to do crafts with Chris. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, no. Listen, don't force, don't push the, the um, creativity. Okay. Look. Okay. Are you here? I'm here. I'm coming. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't know which one am I doing. I have two in front of me and I have to decide in this moment which patch I'm giving tonight. Whatever you think. I'm going to just go with my gut okay. and do what I, I think. Um, first or secondly, I am going to... <laughs> We need to acknowledge that Elias is relegated to the corner as Itty Bitty Elias, and it is absolutely hysterical. This was Elias's idea. We were talking about how we should set up the <laughs> the uh, crafts with Chris, and Elias was like, oh, well, why don't you just kind of like stick me into the corner? And he made it happen, and I'm totally here for it. Well, I did it as a joke, and then I'm laughing at it. I'm looking at it like, oh, my God. So um, what we have Steve today, said this feels a little too Star Wars prequel for me. <laughs> <laughs> is a patch. This um, I had two choices tonight, and I put this into Discord, and the the choices were going to be a more serious patch or a funnier patch. So the funnier patch I'll do tomorrow. Okay. Because we're kind of like getting in the situated in the space and everything. Um, and this patch is a patch that was requested by a friend, Danielle, um, who you guys might have heard of on the, on the stream. Um, and it has some like story behind it. I don't necessarily know. I don't think I'm going to do the story justice, but I'm going to try to convey the story for the request of this patch um, to the group. <laughs> Should be perched like Chris's shoulder like a conscience. <laughs> and the patch that I'm going to give away tonight is this one. It's a cheetah, and it says you can do hard things. Um, this is... Uh, patch that Danielle requested and the story behind it is there's an author who wrote a book um, I don't remember the author's name but there is an earlier story in the book where the it, it's kind of like a female empowerment book which I love the messaging in it um, and I feel like on the stream we have like a, a bunch of strong female um, audience members who we connect with regularly on discord and so I feel like that also kind of connects to it. The story in the earlier part of the book where she's talking about her whole idea is that like you can do hard things and that um, uh, that's the catchphrase of like her philosophy. It's by as an Glennon author. Doyle. Yeah, thank you. So the earlier part of the book talks a little bit about this cheetah and the cheetah is kind of like raised with, uh, with a lab. And I think we saw that when we were in... Um, San Diego Zoo where they brought the cheetah out and mm -hmm. it had the lab as a companion and so the cheetahs were kind of saying that like it grow, grew up in like a cage and it thinks it's living a good life 
but it's kind of put into this cage by society. And then the the story is that the kid who's looking at the cheetah is saying, um, you know, is the cheetah actually happy living in the cage? The cheetah thinks that like the life is great and everything, but is the cheetah actually happy when there's a whole world outside? And so I think the parallels there is that sometimes, you know, society puts people in boxes and says that you have to do something a certain way and that it's like you, on, you should be um, comfortable enough to break free and say, you know, I'm not going to be put into a box. And so that's why it's kind of like you can do hard things. So that Chris is a, came up with this, though. Yeah, this is that's a whole heavy topic. But I think that. <laughs> Thanks, Leanne. That is, I totally didn't draw that parallel, but that is a thing. Chris and is like, I still don't want to commit to it because I don't know step, that I can do hard things. <laughs> step by step, Chris is showing us every reason why he should be doing the marathon purposefully. And he's like, oh, wow, I had no idea that you can do hard things could apply to my marathon work. <laughs> okay, let's not commit to that. Uh, you can do hard things. That I can do hard things. So I'm going to put that on other people. Um, there is a couple of things that I just want to talk about in the patch making of this. One is that I feel like I've gotten much better at layering things. So one of the concerns when Daniel asked me uh, to make the, the cheetah, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to stitch the black dots on there across it so that it looks like good enough. And um, then I thought about it and I could... I've gotten good at like removing some of the layers on the patch um, so that I'll leave like the yellow out and then first stitch a layer of black dots underneath and then ultimately stitch the yellow on top. So I just want to show you guys where it started. This was actually a, only a two patch run. Um, so the first one that I did was this one uh, and a couple things that I edited on it. The eye in the right was like a little bit weird and oh, now I can do side by sides. Um, <laughs> so fancy. The eye in the right was a little bit weird. I also wanted to fix the mouth, the mouth, like the snout I felt like was too um, similar to the regular fur. And so I wanted to change it. So if you look on the right hand side. Yeah, totally. I could see that. Yeah. Halfway through, I switched the. So those three are like a sequence, the snout, the, and the eye shadowing. Um, I switched it halfway through cause I didn't like the color. And then I committed to it on the left to make it like pop a little bit more. Um, and then also something small, if you look on the upper right of, or the right hand side, <laughs> Eloise. the little, um, like hair things popping up at the top are bunched on the right hand side and so i fixed that on the left hand side because <laughs> you're getting so much better now if you can only cut it out in an even circle <laughs> yeah well listen that <laughs> that's using the rotary tool thing and that's too much work i don't um, i don't understand what it is like is it one of those like pizza cutters yeah like you slide it around but it's like hard to find the middle of it i think this one was better uh, a little bit listen i gave daniel which one Oh, one of those is Danielle's? No, I gave Danielle the best one. Oh, got it. Sorry, sorry guys, but... Which is the one best one? Was, it's in the mail. I oh, the oh, oh, I understand. Got it. But I think it's super cute. I love the um, the cheetah. I think he came out, or she came out really... She, or they. I think, yeah. Came out really great. Um, and so that's Crafts with Chris. You can do it edition. <laughs> 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 you can do hard um, things. Oh, so let me give you the... Yeah, what? or I could do a square patch, and then I don't have to ro worry about the rotary cutter. So Am should I, I give... Yeah, happening? we can end um, the crafts music, but do you want me to just show our mess and the yeah, green sure. screen? Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay, okay Chris is now going to show you this is our green, green screen. screen. Which you... There's Elias. So behind that is and literally just a wall of like very, very little. 
it's that color that's on the wall there, but it's angled the way it is over there that you see, but behind us. So it's been possible to ever put anything on it to make it look like that. And this is the muskrat cam. Can you guys green screen your living room behind you so we have a point of familiarity? <laughs> no, I think that's like so difficult to do. Halloween. Hey, Jess. Uh, we don't see what you think we see. Oh, yeah, that. And then the mess. Go turn on the light over there, Chris. This is the mess. This is the situation that we're having that we need to clean. And there we are. This is the green screen. You see? That, you see like the angle in there? That's what makes this all so complicated. <laughs> With like a background of a weather map in tonight's forecast, we need to know what low pressure is going to do. Thanks. <laughs> but that's not a bad idea too, Leanne, and just put LED lights and make it funkier. Lots of options. Yeah, listen, this is the first first step in our new space. And more importantly, we don't have to set it up and take it down every time. That's the most important That's part. That's the most of this. important thing. We've done that now every single stream and it's totally a pain. Oh, it takes and, like 25 minutes to do yeah. and then 25 minutes to undo when we do it. And then the cats are all jumping over everything. All right, so let's move out. Oh, you do what you do. So we're going to go back to um cameras. I would really like to go to wine o'clock. I'm here I for wine o'clock. Really yeah. would like some wine. So um, I'm probably going to spill all of this wine all over everything right now. You know what I ha what Steve, if you come over and break down and set up every night, I'm fine going back downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> At least I know pish posh. That ain't no mess. It looks like a cool space. Like very cool. Yeah, it's, it is. It's super, super nice up here, but uh, the imposter chief said taking the setup down after tequila shots can't be easy. You know what though? Um, we have stairs that lead right outside this room downstairs. And I said to Chris, I'm like, you know, if we get like two or three hype trains in a night and we just get blasted, is it a bad idea that we're up here and we're going to just topple down the stairs? Like uh, jokingly, of course. I mean, I don't know. Are we joking? No, you know? I mean, it's the same stairs to the basement and we feed the cats every night after we do the stream. <laughs> and we need Airstreamer roadies. And uh, Meepo said we need, just leave it up all the time, 24-7, all Truman Show style. Who needs <laughs> off-cam time? <laughs> okay, so tonight, can you, are we here? Oh, my God, we don't even have the wine music on. No, we're not there yet. Oh, we can bring oh, us there. Oh, okay, bring us there. <laughs> we have threaded tail. Oh, this is weird now. I don't know where I'm even like... Look at this. I'm pulling it literally, literally. Oh my God. It is from serious. the internet. Wait, let me try that again. Look, duplicated. Oh my God. It is called Threaded Tail from 2018. Um, oh, I just noticed the sides of it are threads. Why is this so hard to read? Heritage grapes were first planted in Paso Robles by missionaries in the early 18th century. Missionaries gave us wine? Yeah, I mean, they had to give uh, wine for church, right? It took until the mid-20th century for this region to gain recognition as well-suited for a wider range of Bordeaux varietals, such as Cabernet. And then later yet, Rhone? I don't even know what that is. What's Rhone? R-H-O-N-E. Like Rhone Island? <laughs> <laughs> Paso Robles wine is as unique as it is as it's winemakers who don't follow traditional rules, they reinvent them. Okay, this... <laughs> they told us nothing. <laughs> it literally told us them? nothing. What's the percentage? 14.5, which I picked for that reason. Okay. I like the name. Here. Um, I like the name. <laughs> the Rhone Valley in France. Threaded Tail. Did you get this because I embroider? It, I didn't even see the embroidery. I called it, I got threaded tail because I'll tell you why. No, I mean, what do you mean embroidery? I'm saying threaded tail as in like I didn't thread. even think that. I thought literally a tail that could, that weaves together, which is our journey. Our journey is a threaded tail. <sighs> That's fine. But literally, I mean, all I ever talk about Elias is 
embroidery and you didn't even draw that parallel it's like if i were to go get uh i don't know like zelda uh-huh and then s- never even draw the parallel that you love zelda <laughs> take the wine you're dead to me <laughs> so um what i was gonna say about the wine and why i picked it is because i went to a new wine store that was on the way back from somewhere and uh, yes, short Pam. That's exactly <laughs> why I, I picked that. So I stopped at this new wine shop and I'm looking around. It's fairly large, but unorganized. And I'm literally like lost in these aisles of wine. And then I find one shelf that seemed to be organized. And I'm like, oh, okay, let me just look at this organization. I'm going down the list. I'm going down the list. And I'm like, oh, this one looks really nice. I've never seen it. It was $8.99. And I'm like, okay, well, that's poison wine. Let me move a little bit forward. And I, I think found, you can probably find some good wines for that like ebook. So then I found the next one, which I'm like, oh, this has a really nice uh, bottle. I really want to try this one. So I pick it up and I'm holding it. And I'm like, okay. And I'm looking around. And then I just happen to glance at the wine cost that I'm holding in my hand and it was $74 and I'm like oh and that's I'm like putting it back yeah again. that's like 100 stream material <laughs> Max said fairly large and unorganized dot 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 like my men <laughs> well cheers to the new setup <laughs> cheers to the new setup oh uh, we can't even oh, do we're, that oh but it's a secret cheers behind yeah or look hold it close or let's face. just no wait look. let's just pull it right from there the wine glass Oh, there we go. The wine glass right from the bottle, because this is how it should be served. Ready? Look, we're pulling wine Cheers from... to stuff. Oh, my God. So they don't give any notes. They don't give any description. They just say that monks planted mm, this at mm, some point. Mm. Lana, I swear to you, I went in there with the... the goal of finding carpe diem and it was so unorganized and i went through every single wine across the racks across the aisles across everything i looked up what, what carpe diem looked like i'm Did trying you to ask find an it. associate no they were all like over in the corner not paying attention to their job and i don't talk to people just ask i mean you're talking to people now yeah i know but still it's different i felt and, uncomfortable well, you should have just asked them yes yeah, so like 5. do you have it What was the last wine that we had? I really liked it. And I'm getting like, I, I, I want that one and not this one. <laughs> what? I'm going to drop this wine. Um, I was... Yeah, Mega Mega. So let's same. first talk about the dust bunnies. The number mm-hmm. of dust bunnies that we have in this... I, I honestly, I don't really get many dust bunnies from it. Is that true? Like, do you? Yeah, agree? I get like one. Yeah, I think it's like, one, like a one dust, dust bunny. bunny. Is Jody here? Jody stood us up tonight. Because I was going to say, why is she not asking about dust bunnies? I don't really. I feel I'm like so I get happy like a that little... all of you agree that talking to people in the store is like not what any one of us wants to do. Oh no, look, like self checkout is if self checkout worked all the time, like wasn't I I have thoughts on self checkout. <laughs> Their self checkout is great, but when it's yelling at you to put something in like in to weigh it like at the supermarket because it I'd rather there, not, leave and not buy anything that I need. It's more interaction yeah. than yeah. Than, totally. Look, folks, like we there should Hi, be a Sophia. there should be a gold list for self checkout where it doesn't um you, you don't get you don't have to like weigh it. They trust you. Like I'm going to I'm going to pay for it. Don't worry. And so that's my thought on self checkout. If we have to like go to the cat and the other thing is if we're kind of like have a lot of things there, I feel like self-checkout is almost like an express lane. So if you have a lot of things that you're doing in self-checkout, maybe it'll piss other people off. So that I have to go to the thing like with the cashier. We are here to rate, not discuss the ins and outs of self-checkout. 
I have thoughts on self check. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a lot of comments happening. I need a language lesson, which I will give you in a few. The seventy four dollar uh, seventy four dollar bottle of wine is all dust bunny. Says Beach, please. Really, you <clears throat> think so? Like, do you so think says that Beach, please? Meepo said, I don't even go to the store if I can avoid it. Exactly. Charlie Boy said, or when ch- self checkout announces every purchase price, Walmart screams it. Yeah, the worst. Wait, do they really do that? Yeah, it's like three ninety nine. Two forty nine. Did you oh, do your right. yeah. your price your, plus card or oh whatever? Oh my god! Yeah. Why did they do that? I don't know. Uh, Patsy, great point. I'm gonna write this in the book so that I can take the information out of the book. But I will like. I will probably post in Discord a wine o'clock review summary, and then every time I can just post it, and you all can look through it. That's not a bad idea, right? Wine o'clock review summary. And then we need to review this one. But also, Alana said that Carpe Diem is not as strong. It's fine, but I don't fully recommend it. So with that said, what would you think she rated it? I already saw it. I already saw it. But I did a five. No, that's incorrect. Excuse me. Five out of seven is like, it's good. You would recommend a five out of seven. Three... To four is where things get hairy about like no longer. But I think Alana, uh, Alana is onto something because that's something that I feel too, where I rate something a five and it's kind of like, okay, it's like six is good. And seven is like, oh my God, I'm dying for my next bottle of this. Okay. So I'm going to do this wine review thing. I, I stopped doing it a little bit ago, so I don't have all the wines, but I'll make the best of it. Just at self checkouts here, always shout unexpected item in bagging area. Oh my god, the that worst. is that's a that's nightmare fuel. Totally, Chris. We need to review this, so I'm gonna go and do my review. Look, what's the rush, Elias? We don't have to unpack anything now. <laughs> no, because the, <laughs> the song is playing. Okay, so let me. I'm doing it first. Don't look. Look at the green screen. I'm getting notes of mold. Is that a thing? (laughs) Okay, tell me what you want. I think a three. Oh, that's what I did. So I gave it a three. Chris gave it a three. Let me transition. um, If I can figure out how to do that. (coughs) You should have a world series of your favorite wines at the end of the year. Totally. Okay, so I'm... I just (laughs) choked on the mold at the same time that I was reading Steve's comment <laughs> about having a world series of wines at the end of the street or at the oh, end of the year. Oh, that's interesting. I, it, I didn't even realize that that's what it was. Yeah. Like if we just literally had bottles of wine and had a stream where we were drinking <laughs> all of our favorite wines. So I will oh tell you God. all off the top of what I'm looking at, like the, the two lowest are the one that I threw up from. And then also jam, which was low. So just keep that in mind. If you ever see jam or Blankenfrausch in the stores, b- avoid at all costs. Yeah, there. We can do the end of the year, like when we're on um, winter break, do a stream of our favorite wines. Deb, I put it in the book. The World Series. Are we? It's not trademarked, right? We can the World, say the series? World Series? I don't know. We can do whatever we want. This is... Uh, we're all friends here. What's it called? Uh, freedom of, of speech. Yeah, the World Series of Wines. But if we're like, but we need to realize that we can't get mad if they sue like, us. Yeah, <laughs> because Trump is suing Facebook because he broke the rules of Facebook and is mad that they kicked him off. You yeah, know? I mean, listen, you sign those <sighs> the EULA thing whenever you make the account. EULA. Right? EULA. Too shy for you. What did you think of the uh, 19 crimes? As a, a Canadian, I fully endorse those spellings. <clears throat> oh, World Series is trademarked. Oh, well. That will do something different. I'm switching back to All right, to well, we'll only, call Chris. it the Wine Series. That's, that's wine what it is. Series. Yeah, that the works. Wine Series. Or the Wasted series. I don't know. Yeah. We have so many options. There's a million double W words. He is not an intelligent person <laughs> at all. Um, okay, so what are what were there was something else that I wanted to talk about before we get into the game. Uh, we I mentioned I think we did you the write podcast. the rating in the box? Yes. The back? Now that we're doing this with the ratings, I'm gonna make a point of it to like do to like always write it. The last one oh that my I God, had Mazi, totally what happened. 
saying not having to hear that person. Oh, I know, I know. The Hold last the one that I had was Conte de la Terre, which I gave a four, Chris gave a five, Murphy good, Blankenfrausch, Fortress, Story Oh, plane. you, look, the moment you had Blankenfrausch and you threw stopped, up, yeah. it was like, I'm gonna just, like, slog through the remaining two, yeah. and then you gave up. Totally. That's what happened. But I don't even... What was the last one that we had that I, have I loved? I a list of them all in the in the book, or in the in the folder that we have, you know? So. Okay, well. The worst wine of the year is going to be Blankenfrauscht. I agree has with that. Has there been a put in the book, put it in the book patch yet? I don't think that there has. So, we are going to start. <laughs> That's so Inception, and, like, we should put that in the book. <laughs> 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 oh, I can't. Um, did I say it out loud? Because every time I kept starting to say it, I feel like I got interrupted. That we do have our latest podcast that's recorded. We just are going to upload it later. I think I said it or in the beginning of the conversation. And yeah. we asked questions to each other, and they're kind of fun. Um, so definitely look f look out for that. And only five star <laughs> ratings. Sophia what? said, put in the book. And I do actually want that in the book. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, actually? Yeah. Really? Truly? Yes, please. Okay, I need so to um, ruminate on these ideas. Like, Danielle gave me the... Is there a patch part? There's supposed to be. Oh. Ooh, patch page and it's empty. Are you serious? Oh my God, I'm the worst. Okay, well, put it in the book. Shrimp eyes. Shrimp eyes. Those are the two that I can think of right now. What? Shrimp eyes and put it, put in, it in, the in the book. book. Put it in. Look, my pa my my uh, process with making these patches is that sometimes they're quick. Sometimes I need to sit on them. And Danielle said, asked me for this patch that we're giving away today. Um, she had like a rough week, and so yes, Leanne, I checked the book just to make sure that there's nothing like lingering. It's not daily. It's probably like every other day. So she. No, Chrissy, Gabe, it's hot up here. It's hotter than normal. Yeah, and listen, I'm like a heat box. Um, she gave, she asked, she asked for mm. this, and mm -hmm. then I kind of like slept on it, and I was like, "How am I going to do you, these uh, these these uh, spots on this on this uh, cheetah?" And then I woke up. He and ruminated. I ruminated, and um. I think it came out great. I love it. He's so cute. How is the airflow in this upstairs room? So we have the central HVAC bordering our room right now, like the wall that we're in, it borders it. And we have a vent sort of directly in front of us. So it's fine. It's just because it's the the third floor up. Um, it is warm. It's just warmer than normal. And I'm just trying to get myself situated. I'm not going to lie. I just hit my hand on the desk. Like I punched it. I don't even understand. Yeah. Look, I mean, we've done almost 60 streams in those recliners and we've had our own challenges in those recliners. And so we're going to have challenges here. Yeah. We had a lot of challenges in those recliners. I One, know that they, they might look like we knew what we were doing, but we, every, it was bad. Remember the initial arms that we bought that were just flopping, flopping all over every, yeah. and it falling. I mean, it was so bad. Yeah. So look, yes, this for sure is a little bit of a change for the stream for the audience Change is hard. But I think it's for the better. It's certainly for the better for us because we get a little bit more comfort doing this for two hours. Mm -hmm. um, and Eloise is living for it. She's so, delivering look, on all accounts. She is here for it. I think this is going to be her space now. Uh, Magamax said, Brian, did Gavin see the video I posted on Discord about the gift shop with all the Gavins? It's really, really funny. You need to watch it, Brian, if you missed it. Um, and... The other thing what that I wanted to mention <laughs> was what? Meepo. What happened? It's okay. We get what we get and we don't throw a fit. But it's <laughs> close enough, Meepo. <laughs> we get what we get and you don't get upset. But that's amazing. <laughs> we get what that's we amazing. get and we don't throw a fit. That's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Oh, my God. So there is conversation that I want to have about the game that we're playing, which is called Planet Zoo.
Silver said a live show. That tonal shirt. Oh, yeah. Here, look. So this is the tonal logo. It says love stronger. Their whole thing is about like do. Oh, it's backwards. It's like do stronger. Tonal is like a strength training thing. Um, oh, is that something that we haven't done? We haven't flipped the cameras. Um, No, it makes sense, I think. I don't know. So I think we're both flipped. Like I should be on the left and you should be on the right. No. Because, oh, I don't know. I think it's right, Chris. So anyway, it's not backwards, they're saying. Um, I love seeing everything you do. In the, uh, Imposter Wave said, I love the new setup. Looking forward to seeing everything you do with the spaces you get more comfortable. Thanks, Imposter Wave. Aww, thank you. Um, so the tonal brand is all about getting stronger. And what I love about tonal is they never ever really talk about the way you look. It's not like a do this and you'll look like a skinny legend or whatever. It's all about just being stronger and it could be mentally stronger, be physically stronger, whatever the case might be. But they're the, the pride shirt. It says love stronger. And the only way you could have gotten this this year was if you donated to um, one of the organizations that they spoke about during the um, virtual pride parade that they did. And the organization that we donated to was, it's so cool. It's all about an organization that makes sure that sports are inclusive and safe for everyone. So if there's an organization that does like a baseball situation and they have to throw those you know, soccer balls around. Yeah. And get the touchdowns. Yeah. Then they'll make sure that any LGBTQ folk who wants to play isn't going to be discriminated against or made to feel um, like less than, you know? So, yeah, I mean, we would have supported that even if we didn't get a shirt out of it. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. So, uh, and also I remember we were listening, we were driving up, but Lana, all the time with what you said, in, all the time in the camper, or we were not driving up in the camper. That that would be, I don't know that it even has an engine. We were driving up with the camper to the campsite recently, and listening to the pride parade, mm-hmm. and the internet was cutting out just as they were showing some of the video or the pictures that we submitted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we submitted some pictures to the virtual pride parade and um, it literally cut off just as bo- like literally we, just as when we not? had perfect internet the whole time. And then as we were pulling up, um, it cut out and then, but we still had internet to submit the donation. So yeah, well, it took me a while. Hi Jody. Welcome. We were asking about you before um, you're missing a whole lot of newness. So, you know, you might, freak out for a moment but we're gonna try to um oh wait is jody like spiritually connected to the the cheetah patch i want to show her oh that's what i wanted to talk about go ahead no talk about it no go you say what you're gonna say oh my god jody look oh a a dead to me if i'm not given a dead to me patch at some point i'm defecting said bella (laughs) (laughs) it says you can do hard things this was a request that came from uh, a friend of ours, Danielle, and she asked me to make a cheetah patch that said you can do hard things. And it's um, derived from the book uh, Untamed by Glennon something. O'Doyle. Her? O'Doyle. Um, something about Danielle I wanted to mention, and this is like not to be too somber, but I do want to bring attention to it, um, is that uh, she has had her cat oscar for 15 years going on 16 years and she had to put him down today it's and it's so just hard it's so hard and i know the feeling she's feeling and i know how difficult this journey is going to be and how it might seem like you'll never want another pet and what's wrong with us for getting pets and whatever the only thing is that really time does make it a little bit better, but you'll never not feel the way that you feel in this moment. It's just, I remember, yeah, I mean, look, I don't want to totally bring the mood down when we were sitting in like the room with (laughs) Jean gray and like he was sick and we were sitting there was the worst, both of us like sobbing. Yeah. I know. I mean, there are children. It's like, what can you, 
like what can you do i mean you have to make the best decision and she made the right decision she did yeah i mean it was a it was a fairly quick moving situation that she was in um she knew that something must have been up but then it sort of pretty quickly took a turn and so she had to make the decision today and so she did it and she was courageous enough to be in the room with oscar and 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 i think that know. i mean it it's weird like that it all kind of connects but danielle asked me for this patch like in the beginning of the week oscar had not been doing well over the week last weekend she asked me for the patch and um i was like i want to do something nice for her danielle's such a great friend and like she does so much for everyone and i just it's like so stupid but i mean like i feel like this is like some i don't have a lot of artistic creativity but making something personal for someone, I just feel like I get a little bit of joy putting some time and saying like, this is my way of saying like, hey, I appreciate you. And like you had that bad day and I was like, hey, I appreciate you. Here's yeah, a patch. totally. And it was like, hey, Danielle, I love you. Like, I appreciate you. You're a great friend. I want to make you feel a little bit better. And when she messaged me and said, hey, I want this patch, I was like, oh my God, absolutely. And so I... Again, I ruminated on it for a night because I wanted to get the the look right. But the whole concept of like being a strong person and, you know, the the story behind that, it's like it's a hard decision to make. Of and course. I think she's a strong person for like, you know, making the decision that's right for him. And, you know, and unfortunately, it's a sad decision, but it is, you know, you know, that's what you kind of have to do when you have pets and yeah I mean, there's no so way to sugarcoat it other than that time heals wounds mega meg said pet owners are very brave we go into relationships with loved ones we know will die before we will we go in willingly knowing that our hearts will be broken yeah it's just really 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 sad and, and in danielle's case something uh sort of remarkable <clears throat> is that danielle moved out of her apartment about a week or two later, uh, I'm sorry, Danielle moved out of her like home that her mom and, and her and her sister had when, you know, we're all high schoolers or whatever. She graduated college and then she moved out of that home for uh, within like a week or two. She ended up getting Oscar. Now, even stepping back a bit further, me and Danielle were not. Um, high school friends as much as we were post high school friends, even though we went to the same high school. But what happened was one time my cat Sylvester and his, I, I was going to say girlfriend, um, I mean, a lady cat <laughs> yeah, had babies <laughs> and the baby out of wedlock <laughs> and the babies. One of them was Jean gray, which is what I kept. And the other, uh, and so me and Chris's first cats together were Sylvester and Jean gray, who was the father and the son. Yeah. And so one time I was looking for folks to want to, who might want to adopt some of the other kitties and so I invited Danielle over with uh, our two friends who became nuns, which is like the story we just keep putting off. Um, and she, one of the cats, the little cat, we had a little tiny patch here, a soul patch, fell asleep on her leg and she lost it. And she's never had a cat before and she didn't think her family would want a cat. And so she ended up uh adopting uh, uh charlie that's what they named him because he looked like charlie chaplin i think i think that's why they named him charlie that i mean that makes sense or was it here i don't remember yeah mozzie mega meg i mean honestly it's like it it's never easy it's just maybe it lessens a little bit but it's not like it's forgotten <laughs> Chrissy said, I've been promised the nun story for months. Maybe that could be a tomorrow <laughs> thing since it's just chatting. I actually just had a conversation recently with my friends about how I don't, it's like uncomfortable to talk about my nun friends, but like we will, I promise you we will. So anyway, Danielle takes Charlie. Charlie lives a long and, and glorious life. I mean, super loved. That's super honestly loved. what's important is that they have a great life. Like there are so many rescue pets out there that don't get that yeah and like everybody who's on this stream everybody who like we know gives wonderful lives to their pets and that's i think what's most important and what should be remembered 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Chrissy said, we'll say a prayer about them before we talk about them. <laughs> and Brian said, sis, sis, sisters of life, Brian. It's the sisters of life. <laughs> so the the story with Danielle with the with Charlie is that that made her not only a cat person, but it brought me and her much closer together. And then we ended up becoming best friends as time went on. Not I'm not going to just say that it like is because of the cat, but it had a lot to do with our with like uncovering how much similarities we have. Then she moved out of her apartment when she was uh, 22, I want to say. And then a week or two later got uh, Oscar, maybe not that close, but she got Oscar. And the point of this story, but also that's, I mean, you know, a little bit of nostalgia and, you know, connection that I have between myself and Danielle and Oscar is that that was the moment that I kind of came into the picture she yeah. was just getting up. Uh, this is uncomfortable. I'm laughing about these sad things, but there's a lot of really funny things going on in the chat. So she was um, she was uh, just becoming, or she was just getting Oscar, and I was just coming into the picture. So that's kind of like the start of my friendship with yeah. Danielle at the same time that she... Yeah, it was she right around that time. It was because she just got that apartment and you yeah. were I remember you were painting that one wall with her. Yep, totally. And that, that was like wall. my first time. Yeah. And then so Danielle gets Oscar. Now fast forward 15 years, 16 years, which is now today. That means that her whole adult life outside of living at home included Oscar. And that's what I think makes this even more complicated and situa- and 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 difficult to sort of deal with if you're Danielle because she's never really truly known living an, as an adult in her home without this cat. And that's like Mega Mike said earlier. It's like we do these things because we know they're going to happen and we're, I guess, brave enough, courageous enough, stupid enough. I don't know what you want to call it, but we do it and we love every moment of it. But then when the tragedy happens, it's like almost unbearable you know yeah i mean too shy for you and mozzie are both talking about beth and howard honestly i think like what they do is really hard because you get these and i mean to take these fosters in and then give them out to other families i would find difficulty in that Mm -hmm. because it's you're kind of starting that connection and then the moment that you share you share that connection you're passing it to another another family and it's and it has to be i mean it's great work but it's it's super hard work i think megamix said my best friend's husband died from cancer very short and and excruciatingly painful fight as pet owners we have the privilege to help them die painlessly and peacefully we literally were just talking we talked about that with danielle today honestly on the phone we were talking about her and or talking about it with her like that humans are not kind of afforded that same privilege where if you have somebody who's like painfully sick, they kind of have to hang on. And it's, I mean, it's hard. It's hard. Like it's hard to make the decision too with pets, with humans, with whatever, but I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. And certainly we're not going to find the right answer here on air streamers, but no, it just, I but wanted it's to like bring it super up. hard. And I think Danielle is a strong person for making the decision that she, she made. Yeah. And she was even in the room with, uh, with Oscar, which I think is so brave. Something I legitimately can't. I couldn't do, do that. I couldn't do I it. I couldn't do it. We couldn't do it with Jean gray. And I, I, um, I mean, so like, this, this stream is dedicated to Oscar and Danielle. Aww. Um, the other thing earlier, someone mentioned about the nuns, whether they are real nuns or drag nuns. Oh God, I wish. No, I, <laughs> I wish, wish the latter. They were drag nuns. <laughs> they are, in fact, real nuns that have been lost to the system. We no longer really like can talk to them. One of the things, one of the little tidbits, I'll give you just a little bit before maybe we'll delve deep in the future. Neither Chris or I are allowed to see them alone because we may lure her like, or that's the wrong word. We may entice her. Like she may feel feelings because we're men that would drive her away from the, the, the nunnery, the the situation that she's in. Do they, you know, I mean, I went to Catholic school, but do the, does 
the Catholic school administration or the, the Catholic administration. Oh, wait, Steve has a good point. We'll talk about that in a sec. Go for it, Chris. Do they um, understand the concept of not a chance in hell? <laughs> <laughs> Because it's it's not going to happen. I don't know. OG Steve said on my HDTV screen, both of your names in the upper corners are out of the title safe area and getting cut off. That's good to know. And we will make an adjustment for that. Can you just write it in the book on that page that the pen is on? We'll bring them in earlier. I don't know Eloise's what title perfect safe is. It just like we'll bring it in a little bit more, you know, because they're, we're in the like zone where it's probably zoomed in a little bit on the TV. Um, lots of people talking about Brian. That's that I, that gave me a chuckle. Yeah. Hospice is the closest we get to assisted suicide, but we need more. Yeah. Jen. I mean, totally. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the right answer is for oh, that. Cause it's Oscar. such a tus- touchy, like subject with humans, but I mean it, and we, we've never had to experience that. I mean, knock on wood. So it's like, I don't know what the right solution is, but it's, it's definitely a hard decision to make. This is a all very hot and heavy. So I think that um, I think I need to pour more wine. As I a, think you should do that too. It's the I in Elias's name and the S on Chris's name that are cropped. Okay, good. So we're gonna move them in a little bit more towards where the, you see the windows where they are at the bottom. Wait, I think can we do it now? Um, yeah, and, Steve, I'm gonna do it right now, and you tell me if that makes any if it makes any difference. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and then Steve, tell me if this matters. Does your TV have a dot by dot mode? By default, TVs leave a little off the edges for overscan because no longer matters in today's digital world. My bottle is at the cat. Yeah, Jody, you could drink way past that. Yeah. I mean, you know, Oh, thank you, Jody. Oh, thanks, Jody. So you said I missed a few streams. Walked in late tonight, and boy, I missed a lot. It even looks yes, it's very, very different for sure. We Look, could this talk is about Air Streamers 3.0. I feel like one was us on the couch dumpster fire. Two was us on the recliners dumpster fire. Three is us on a green screen dumpster fire. <laughs> Sophia was here. Trinity K. Bonet's Beyonce. Holy moly, that was absolutely oh, we the could best dedicate thing. a stream to that a million percent. Uh, oh, I, good. Wait, Thanks, Steve. I think that I'm glad that Jan got the win that she deserved. I mean, oh, spoiler, but yeah, excuse me. I'm sorry, rewind, uh, spoiler alert, but <laughs> cover your ears. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I feel like it was kind of like a half win. Well, because she didn't win win, you know. And at the same time, I think that uh Trinity really delivered in the Beyonce um big time drag dance. Um Sam, I just read your comment and that's just like practically bringing tears to my eyes. It's hard, but a must. Have you seen those cartoons where the pet is in heaven and God? Or an angel is asking what killed them, and they are just like, I don't know. My human was there and giving me a hug. Makes Aww. me ball every time. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there oh an image God. of a dumpster Pets. fire you can project into the green screen? It was epic. Did you see Bianca Del Rio's Instagram post? I did not. I did, bare, Honestly, I didn't really check much of Instagram today, and I do follow Bianca. <clears throat> you want to get totally nitpicky at the bottom with top cheer and top gifters cut off a pid, but it's splitting hairs otherwise looks great. Steve, that sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally. We're, we have pushed everything to the edges, not anticipating this situation. So this is good stuff that we can learn from. Um, okay. So I would like to, now that we've done all of that, I'm going to run to pee before we start playing. Oh my God. This is my first solo pee music. Yeah. How long is it going to take you to get there? I have no idea. I, I have mean, to walk do all the way downstairs. Run, I, do we have to run a bathroom line up here or something? Cause that's, Oh, that would be convenient. That is not something that I have the capability. I can <laughs> run a cable for internet maybe on a good day. <laughs> Let's time but, it. You all do it. Okay. Ready? I'm going to go. Bye. Oh my God. Who's timing me? <laughs> I cannot imagine running piping in the house 
knowing what it was like to run a single cable downstairs to the basement. It was a nightmare. And <laughs> to, when was it yesterday or today? Elias turns to me, we ran the cable on Monday. Elias turns to me on like Thursday or Friday and he's like, I think I'm still tired from running the cable. And I'm like, I don't think that's a thing now, like three or four days later that you're still tired from an event that we did that far ago. Or we could get him a bedpan for the stream. Literally, I mean, for the stream and for the stream. <laughs> Pipe the music through the house wherever Elias, whenever Elias goes to pee. Oh my God. Or no, Steve, what I should do is I should pipe different music throughout the house when he goes to pee and play this so that he thinks that the other music is the pee music and he'll never actually hear this pee music. But can you guys even just... <laughs> yeah, bedpan, that totally won't get us banned. Can you guys even stand Eloise though? Look at her, she is loving it. It's like a little bit warmer up here than it is in the on the main floor. And I think she's just like living her best life on the on the new setup. <laughs> Sober. <laughs> I'm back. I know you're back. Did, Did you, you hear see my everything? comment? No? That was two minutes, Elias. Um, I think earlier... Uh, Did you see my comment? No, what comment? Nobody's... I was peeing and I said I'm peeing. How did no one comment oh, on well, that? Well, you're peeing from the Airstreamers. At least say it from yourself. I'm not peeing. We are the Airstreamers. <laughs> you're not the Airstreamers. It was what was on my phone? Oh, my God. What? Two minutes. It took you two minutes. Yeah, did I bad. ever read anything or did I dream this? That ant mammals, no matter what the size of them all take about the same amount of time to pee M mammals mammals yeah turn, turn this way just a little bit because you're like far off to the side and like, you won't be able to see you if the it feels like the bathroom is further away yeah because i have to go down a flight of stairs i have to go like, across tumble, the room tumble down. tumble down this flight of stairs and then go so uh, what i'm I, I think that, oh my God, I missed you posting that. Yeah, no, I'm peeing, holding my phone, saying I'm peeing. Not one person reacted to me about that. Wait, what did Imposter Steve say about um, Imposter Wife Jen? No one saw it. Clearly, no one saw me <laughs> writing that I. Steve peeing. is blaming Jen because. He was pouring wine. <laughs> I saw that elephants and cats, same thing, time to pee. Hypothetically speaking, could a toilet flushing be worked into this segment, or is that too lowbrow? <laughs> Listen, there's no lowbrow on this Yeah, stream. look, I didn't see. Oh, too shy for you said I did see it. All right. Listen, I would like to show off a little bit of this zoo game. Show me. Show me. Let me explain it to you. This game is called Planet Zoo. Oh, you have to start the game. Um, okay, I will do that. This game is called Planet Zoo, and it got really good reviews. It's only for the PC, unfortunately, right now. And by unfortunately, I mean a lot of people have reached out to me saying, like, oh, I want to play this. What system is it on? But it's not for um, consoles, at least not yet. Oh, I mean, I that. don't know that this translates well to consoles. I don't think so either. Like, the there controls are, are really so many, weird. Yeah, I... I tried playing this for like 30 minutes and I was overwhelmed by the controls and I was like, Elias, you can, you can play this now. I don't want to play it. I'll just um, direct. But you can totally play Factorio. Yeah, that's different. It's literally not different. Doggies, we are streaming from the room across from Chris's office, which is actually my old office that I've repurposed into... Um, well, I mean, if this is if yes. you're the host of this show, then this is really your office, and so it's really now your official office where you do work. Right, which is this. <clears throat> so let me explain this Planet Zoo game. 
it's like a sim city let's say specific to building various zoos and the game kind of guides you through what it needs from you so at some point i'm sure you'll have like an open like space to do whatever whatever you want but right now let me load um Steve, this is a PC game only, and Jody, this is Theme Factory, but for zoos. Um, <laughs> let me do this. I Jody wanna... said Theme Factory. We haven't seen that in ages. <laughs> They're oh releasing a new uh, update soon. Like, can we get the we? Ultimately, we got the 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 rocket to Mars. So, is there something beyond that now? You're going to have to figure out the P music situation with the next Mario Kart stream. So look, let me show you here. This is our, this is like a high level view of the, uh, oh my God. of the Jody's zoo. calling it theme zoo. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> the very first thing we brought into the zoo were these turtles. So let me show you what these look like. I these mean, are they the are, they're pissed. Look, look at them. He's like, I get this ball out of here. I don't want it. Right. So these are the turtles. They are actually a really big uh, attraction. As you can see, all the people like hiding behind there. They love the turtles for whatever reason. So then the next thing we brought in, I'm going to go through not all of them, but just some of them is um, these. What are these called? Peacocks? Those are like Indian something waterfowl. Oh, right, right. So that's what these look like. You think it's working well because it's choppy on my little screen here. Yeah, the little screen doesn't mean anything. Okay. Um, let me show you some cool ones, though. Oh, those are tortoises? What'd you do, Chris? Uh, I just went full screen. Okay. Um, those are tortoises. It was my mistake. What's a cool one? Oh, the bear. Or the bison? Or is he's bear? Oh, look. This is the bear that I pushed aside. Or that I pushed Chris into. <laughs> What is that feeding machine with the fish? That has yeah, guys, like when the... you watch the stream back, check it out on a large monitor. A bunch of stuff getting cut off now. No worries now. Okay, we'll take a look. Yes, the animals um, in this game, they have done a really good job of not only animating them really well, but they apparently interact with each other like they would in their real life counterpart, which is super cool. So what is this fish machine that has the, like, the mouth hole in it? This thing? Yeah. Um, I think that it throws out fish every so often, perhaps. I'm not sure. And then the bison, where are the bison at? You have a lot of important attention. Yeah, alerts. I'm going to come out of this farm or zoo in a few. I just want to show, here we go. I just want to show all of the viewers a little bit about what we've got going on here. Oh my God, look at that person scooping up the poop. Right? So you all see that? Yeah, they do hump and they can procreate. Oh my God, Elias, too shy for you asked about the podcast on Spotify. Did you figure that out? No, because I need to do something very, very, very different than what I'm doing right now. Like I need to reorganize the whole thing because we're paying for the Apple podcasts um, situation, which only brings it there. And because there's no RSS feed in what we're doing, because Apple provides the RSS feed, I would need to redo the whole thing. And I'm not quite there yet. So I'm moving to this new podcast map which we just started moments before we started christ i just dropped uh an empty cup thank god <laughs> well you Christmas knew it was gonna Christmas happen <laughs> <laughs> all right so this this park here the safari is in africa is this calandra yeah, and look, the, on the left, I don't know if you could see because it's a little bit small, but the left says that what we need to do is release one of any habitat species to the wild. Number two is we need to build a transport ride that's a certain amount of feet long. Then we need to increase the education rating of our, um, <clears throat> of Can our we? zoo. Something that I learned playing this game is the goal of zoos is not, if it's like a good zoo, it's not just like, okay, here are some animals. It's supposed to educate you when you go there and like you walk away feeling like you've learned. And I think the that's zoos, a good idea. Totally. And the zoos that do really well are the ones that keep uh, the animals in captivity until they're ready to be released into the wild. Yeah. And then they do that and they release them into the wild. Even look, even, look I mean, elephant. I'm, this is a, a mind F, but 
what I'm er, earlier on the stream we talked about the cheetahs in that we learned how they have a companion lab yeah at San Diego Zoo and San Diego Zoo also had like that um San Diego Animal Park or something where they like raised the animals and right. that they ultimately I think at some point maybe released them I don't know so like, I'm just bringing things full circle. Look like, at this hyena. Look, it's tater tot. Oh, it looks crazy. Aww. All right, so look, that those are my goals right now. The three things that I need to do are release one of the habitat species. And a habitat, I mean, I think we all know this, but I'm going to repeat it. A habitat is like one of these things where there's like a huge... And, uh, environment that the animals live in and yeah. then an exhibit animal is one of the like little ones where um uh oh thanks jody oh thanks jody one of the little ones where you end up put, like showing like a scorpion or something stupid you know sorry I, if you're a scorpion lover oh the, the animal park that's what the wild animal park that's what it was um Love so this. look at how muscular i mean look brooding uh the you have to build some kind of transport yeah, system. So I'm gonna I want to just oh, a, no. as a goal. That is that's the goal of this park. Not but the whole. A, any goal, comma. Ooh, transport system. look at that glass top. Oh, fancy! They're charging extra in that gift shop for sure. I want people's feelings on. Chris, I can't see when you do that. Oh yeah, I want people people's feelings on the metro or the monorail at magic kingdom what i uh, what do you mean what kind of feelings do you want people to provide for you i want do they like it do they not like it like is it there a are, good thing there are like a polarizing feelings on this i'll give my feelings i have thoughts oh on clearly it. they're polarizing so wait before chris gives his very polarizing feelings on this i need to connect this um little thing here all the way. I don't know why it's like dark, but I need to connect it all the way to over here. Right. So I'm going to do that while Chris is talking. Um, Steve is asking in one sentence, what is the goal of this game? The goal, the of, goal oh, of the game is sorry. to make zoos period <clears throat> period. Oh, in one sentence, like that was the, the thing we needed to. Yes. Make zoos, make successful zoos that help save endangered species and educate people. Okay, That's it. so doggies and Imposter Steve both love the monorail and hate taking the boat into Magic Kingdom. My feelings on this, and you guys can block and unfollow, is... I like the monorail as an option, but I would also like to just have a parking lot where you can walk into the park if you don't want the monorail experience. That is true. I agree. The boat thing, we had a boat coming out of um, when we stayed there at Fort, Fort Wilderness, and we didn't take it, so I, I can't speak to that. I don't know how that that goes. But, Wait. Wait. Um, <gasps> Look. Oh, are you riding the monorail now? I'm riding it. Look. This is Jurassic Park style. Oh, this creeps me out. Oh, Sam and Watson is saying that the oh experience God. of parking and taking the mo or taking the monorail is go to Disneyland in California. Hmm. I mean, I think that that's a more difficult journey for our, our airstream. So this is now doing a test to verify that this little four by four, they call it, works. So does it work? Yeah, I think it's working so far. This is giving me Jurassic Park vibes. Yeah, it worked. So I think, look, we got that one done. So now the next thing is we need to increase our education rating to 1.2 stars. Right now it's at 0 0.1. We also need to release one of any habitat species to the wild. All right, how do we do the wild <clears throat> situation? Maybe like, what do we release an elephant or something? Jody said, watch out for the Dilophosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> the gay Dilophosaurus. Wait, so um, if I think 
Alana might have missed the patch. Alana, this is the patch. This is a female empowerment patch. Um, Danielle was Danielle, our friend, had requested it, and I made an extra one for the stream. So it says you can do hard things, and it has a little cheetah on it. Look, Chris, I'm going to release this elephant to the wild. It's 22 years old. Oh, is it going to be okay? Oh, I don't know. How They're, long do they live for? I don't know. Like, you don't want to just set... So this is a 15-year-old that I could release to the wild. I mean... Do I, do I just do it? I don't know. Did you ask it? Like, ask it its feelings first. Look, I can't release these ones because they're not meant for release. I can release this one. Do you want me to do another animal? Yeah, the elephants are really smart. I don't think that you should do that. Do I don't even like know. This is a bird? brand new, like, area, so I don't even know what it is that we... What is that? Oh, that's I feel a like human. a giraffe would <laughs> release the human to the Oh, wild. what if I just do this gazelle? Yeah, it's fine. They're going to just be fine. They'll just hop all over the place. All right, ready? Release okay. the, to the wild lifespan remaining. It's got a good lifespan. It's for, it's fertile. It's got a good fertility gene. I don't know what that is. It's conservation status means it's low. What does that mean? Relates to how endangered the animal is. Endangered species with low population counts generate higher conservation credit values when released. Oh, so we're getting conservation credit for this. Oh, because it's not. Because it's like abundant. Yeah. That's why. Got it. Um, okay. But Look, we did that. So now the next I, I'm thing is. I'm confused by that because if you have an animal that maybe doesn't have like it's uh endangered mm -hmm. and you release it to the wild is there a chance that it could just get murdered by like yeah but i don't think you'd do that if there's like three of an item of an animal like in the world you're not just going to release one of them because you're destroying 33 percent of its population i think you're going to try to get to like a certain number before you do that mm. but that gazelle was whatever you know it's going to have some fun now and in, in oh it's going to yeah party town yeah so oh, oh, what is that, that thing hanging on the right over there? This yeah. thing? No. On, this what thing? is that? This little, thing? No. The bush. This thing? Yeah. Um, it's a bush. It's a hanging grazer feeder. Oh, look. They're about to eat on it. Look, it's eating it. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> so some... I saw earlier, somebody said that... I think it was Salmon Watson, but oh, it's quote pooping. Me, that it literally just pooped. Elephants can live sixty plus years, and then OG Steve just said that blue trolls can live seventy plus years in <laughs> captivity. <laughs> All right, well, Chris. Now what we need to do is educate our <laughs> our people. Mega 